I just want to first um, congratulate the honorees and just say that education is very important and I congratulate all of you for the work that you're doing. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about my story and I want to start by talking about the word Gemini. And when you hear the word, I'm sure you may think of the Greek <coughs> mythology, the sign of twins. But to me, the word Gemini means the gem in myself. When I look at a gem, I see a nice, clean, brilliant, polished, cut stone, radiant and illuminating. What you don't see is how that gem was created, how it became a precious stone. Its beginnings are humble and far removed from the expensive Tiffany price tag now proudly displayed for all the world to see. It begins as a rock in dirt, pounded by the sand and the earth, by nature, and plagued with the unknown value of its self-worth and dignity. Worthless, or so you may think. The year was 1984, in Brooklyn, New York. A little girl, 12, inexpressible feelings of sadness after the BCW caseworker told her, well, your mother doesn't want you right now. Maybe someone else will want you. Do you have anyone else that can take you? And after a pause, when the woman realized that there was no one else, she said, don't worry, and she took her hand. And she said, we'll find somewhere for you to live. We'll find you a home. <clears throat> BCW, while they were looking for someone to take this little girl and make sure that she had a home, continued to look, and maybe they're still looking even until tonight. <laughs> In the meanwhile, while BCW was looking, she experienced living in five new homes. She went to five different high schools. She never graduated from any. She ended up getting her GED. She was homeless. And she just didn't know what the world would have to offer her. It was in the spring of 1997 when she was alone and unsure of what would happen next. At 25 years old, feeling alone and wondering would life ever change, she decided to make a change for herself. With the help of her best friend, Tony, who she now refers to as a sister, a positive chain reaction in her life was started. Her parents, who are in the audience today, took her in. The precious stone was turned in and turned her into a precious stone. After moving into the empty nest of the McQueens, who are here today, and with the support and guidance of the Westchester Community College, this remedial student ended up graduating with straight A's from Westchester Community College. With the help of Dr. Hankin and Dr. Ford and Dr. Shea, she was able to graduate as the Westchester County Hall of Fame Women's <coughs> Hall of Fame Award and a full tuition scholarship to New York University. It was with the help of two lost firm partners, Christopher Aguiz and Michael Lightling, where, as you all know by now, that I was a little girl, as a fax operator in a big law firm, was able to build up enough courage to talk to these partners and say, hey, how do you get to law school? How do you become a lawyer? And I will never forget that they took the time outside of the fax office to sit me down and tell me what they went through and how I could achieve my educational goals. <clears throat> it was with the help of Dr. Virgie Albright, Dr. Ellington, Rona Middleberg, Dean Patricia Carey, Dr. Carolyn Purcell, who helped me to get through NYU and to expect more for myself. It was with the help of my mentor and super supportive role model, Angela Velo, and her family, who has given me so much of her time and her family and her household and everything that I could ever imagine 
to allow me to get into law school, to help me to meet mentors, to get me out of law school, to introduce me to Don John Ferrick, who was then the dean. It was with the help of Dean Ferrick and Tom Shawn here and many Fordham Law School supporters where I attended that I got a sought-after clerkship with the Honorable Justice Sonia Sotomayor in the Second Circuit, who now sits on the Supreme Court. In addition, Justice Sotomayor forced me to walk across the Brooklyn Bridge with her. <laughs> on one very hot sunny day. It was Justice Sonia Sotomayor who helped me to introduce, and introduced me to the then Chief Judge of New York State Supreme Court, Judith Pitt. She has taken me under her wings and always has supported me in many of my decisions, from what jobs to take after law school and how to move forward in my life. It was because of Justice Sotomayor, and it was because of Angela Valle, because of Dean Fierick, because of Tom Shawn here, that I was able to graduate from Fordham University School of Law as the first graduating student in the school's history to receive a clinical teaching fellowship at Georgetown University Law Center. At Georgetown, I was able to teach street law to second and third year law students, and I was able to meet a wonderful person, Richard Rowe. Who, was the, who is still the clinical director. I also was able to get my LLM in advocacy with distinction. It was because of Professor Richard Rowe and the ability to look, to look past norms and to take a chance on me and introduce me to the wonderful world of street law. And because of that introduction, I am now friends with the street law family. Lee Arbutman, Deborah Foster, Julie Zimmer, Patrick Campbell, those friendships and relationships are immeasurable. It was because of a recommendation from Lee that I wake up every morning feeling excited about my role as director and supervising attorney at the Rutgers School of Law in Newark Street Law Program, where I helped children who, like myself, needed to understand what laws would affect their lives, to introduce them to new mentorship relationships, to teach them about how to dream and how to think bigger by telling them my story. Last summer, I was able to start the Summer Enrichment Law Academy, a six-week street law summer program for at-risk 10th graders. Since that records, I have been awarded a Young Lawyer Award, a President's Award, a Chancellor's Award for my work at street law. At Rutgers, I served more than 2,300 students in my time here, high school students, and more than 380 law students. So today, I stand before you fully tagged Maybe not from Tiffany's, but definitely tagged with an associate's <laughs> Definitely tagged with an associate's degree from Westchester Community College, a Bachelor of Science from NYU, a Juris Doctor from Fordham Law School, licensed to practice law, an LLM from Georgetown University with distinction, friends of Sonia Sotomayor's, the Angela Belows, the Judith Kays, the Richard Rose, and the Patrick Campbells, Lee Arbutmans, and the Deborah Fosters, and the Judy Zimmers of the world. So, so I end tonight asking you to open up your hearts, your homes, your lives, your mentorship, and give someone in need, someone who seems worthless, or so you do it, a helping hand. I also want to end with a collective thank you to my aunt and 90-year-old grandmother who always does whatever is necessary to make sure that I have what I need, even till today. I want to thank all of the people I mentioned earlier, all the people that I was not able to mention due to time, and all of the people who cared to create the chain reaction in my life. All the people whose hands turned me from stone and dirt into this precious gem. Most of all, I want to dedicate this speech and thank my almost three-year-old son, Kirkland Hugh Powell Jr., for making me want to continue to be a better person and for teaching me what it really feels like to be loved. Thank you.